Welcome back to Casual Bias Rugby. Today we're just going to have our little late Monday thoughts on round four of the rugby championship. Obviously, I didn't do match reviews or weekend review. On Saturday, I was at a wedding, had a bit to drink, and yesterday I felt like a zombie. No state of mind to actually go ahead and film. If you want to get my, my thoughts of yesterday, go and watch Safas and Scripted. I did a podcast with um, Brett and, and Brevan, as always. And there's a lot of interesting thoughts on it. But, but first and foremost, please do remember to like and subscribe to the channel. I do appreciate each and every one of you guys. I love an engaging comment section. Whether it's wild opinions or not, that's kind of what just makes us fans. Um, and the whole basis around this thing is just to, to, to go with discussion. Whether you agree or disagree with me, I know there's a lot of people that disagree with me. I've got a lot of um, crazy... Um, opinions when it comes to certain things uh, but that's just what makes us fans right like we just go out there and we speak our opinions from from a bias standpoint or whatever you want to think about um, in this video we'll we'll cover obviously the Springboks and all blacks and then also cover the wallabies versus argentina games and kind of just talk about the 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 setup for the final two weekends of the rugby championship um, and talk about the takeaways of of this weekend so as i said please do remember to like and subscribe i do appreciate you guys um, Starting off with the with the All Blacks game, um, Springboks versus All Blacks, you can kind of go with, with two perspectives on it. Is it the All Blacks have lost four in a row now to their biggest rival? Or do you say, listen, the All Blacks played twice against South Africa and pulled both games close. Both games going down to literally the final whistle. Um, so th there's kind of two perspectives from it. But let's start with, with talking about South Africa. Obviously, this has gripped, um, this has tightened our grip on the rugby championship. I, I mentioned it before and I was like, expectations for the Springboks will be to win the rugby championship. That is, that is what I care about. That is what the people care about. We, are, we don't want to be this team that is seen as, as a World Cup team, but we don't have any success between World Cups, right? So I want to win at least two to three rugby championships come 2027. We're in a great space. We've got the depth. We've got the talent. Um, we know we can beat any team in the world at the moment. Um, so yeah, that, that is the expectation. And obviously, we are the favourites to win it here at the moment. We're playing literally against the team contesting for the rugby championship in Argentina, who we'll speak about in a bit. Um, but if you look at some of the boys, and obviously I've got to hold my hands up. I was like, Pollard is not the guy. We have to play Sasha or go for Marnie. And I'm not all of a sudden going to flip-flop and retract my statements that I made about Pollard before the game. Because um, I don't think it was invalid, uh, the, the things that I necessarily said. But I would love to see that Pollard literally each and every week. If we go and play that 100 Pollard that ran onto that field on Saturday at DHL Stadium and he puts in performances like that where he carries the ball, his kicks are good, he controls the game nicely, I would have no issue if we played that 100 Pollard every single weekend. Um, so I got to hold my hands up. I was very critical about the guy and he came out and he played a brilliant game. He played a brilliant, brilliant game. That was, that was the Andre Pollard that I've, that I've called for to see, but we haven't seen in years, right? The, the Pollard that played when he was 22, 23 years old, making his debut against the All Blacks, scoring two tries, not afraid to, to go for it. And, and he, he was brilliant. He was the best player on the park for, for large parts. Him, that combination between Andre Pollard and Vili Leroux, absolutely brilliant. Speaking about Vili Leroux, I never saw the day where I, I, I never thought I'd see the day where I see Ibn Etzebet putting Vili Leroux through a half gap. Like usually it's Vili that does that. And I've said it a couple of times, Vili is one of the most underappreciated players in the world. In the world. Um, absolutely brilliant. You look at the likes of Damien Dialinda's performance once again. He's carry meters. Finally we see Damien carrying again. Brilliant. He's, he got the most gain line success. It was ridiculous. Right, so obviously, uh, I wouldn't say a great performance by the Springboks, but a very good performance by the Springboks. I would love to see us go and, and smash a team now. I want us to, to see Argentina, know how hungry they are, and just take all hope away from them. That's kind of the only thing that I want from, from the South African team looking forward. Like, obviously, we smashed um, what's it, Ireland, and we, we beat the Wallabies quite, a, quite comfortably, but I wanted to beat the Wallabies even further, right? Um, I think we, we are due for, for a big victory over a respectable team. I think this Argentinian team, especially what we saw this weekend, they are a respectable team. And I kind of want to smash them. I want to beat a respectable team by 35 to 40 to 45 to even 50 points. That is what we want to see as, as Springbok fans, not scraping over, over, the, over the line. But obviously, I'm not going to sit here and be unthankful, right? Like, what a performance by the boys. 
I think it's the first time ever that we've beat the All Blacks four times in a row, which is an amazing feat for us. Um, and to think that we are doing this with, with a lot of injuries. You know, if you look at that, the World Cup squad that played in the World Cup final, um, that was a very close game between, between us and the All Blacks. But you look at the boys not playing. You look at Steven Kitsov. You look at Dion Furi, um, Trevor Niakane, da Damian Willems. Uh, I mean, they, they, there's a lot of boys. Dion, uh, what's it, Dwayne Vermeel. And, I mean, that's just five off, off the top of my head that I can think about. Erges Sneijman, John Klein. All those boys, they played in the World Cup final, not playing um, in either one of these two weekends. But still, we, 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 we beat the All Blacks twice, twice in a row. And I mean, that, that is amazing for, for us. And you look at the squad depth that we have. Um, Cheslin Colby, what a match he had. Once again, it's just solidifying his, his name as, as one of the most talented rugby players to ever live. And also, in my opinion, he is the most talented rugby player in the world at the moment. I mean, we played four hookers. This is my takeaway. We, pl we played four hookers in that game. Well, not we. The All Blacks and South Africa had four hookers and Cheslin Colby at the most line-out success. He had a 100% success rate at line-out while there was four hookers playing. That is ridiculous. That is crazy. Um, looking at the All Black side, Wallace Satiti, what a match that guy had. He just came out of absolutely nowhere. But a takeaway for me when, it, when you look at the All Blacks team is, um, I don't know. I don't know. As I said, there's, there's two ways to, to, look about, to look at it. But then they haven't really put up a solid performance playing again, except for, for Fiji, right? And where's the rotation? That, that is the big question for me when you look at the, look at the All Black side. How can you have all these classy players? Um, Anton Lennon Brown probably played his best game against Argentina, hasn't featured since then in the starting 13 or 12 jersey. Billy Proctor, insane against, the, insane against Fiji, even scored against Fiji, hasn't even featured in the squads yet. You've got Bowden Barrett and DMAC, yet... Only DMAC has played in that 10 jersey. Why don't you switch it around a bit? I know Steven Perafeta is injured, but as soon as, he's, as soon as he's better, put him in that 15 jersey again. Put Bowden in that 10 jersey. Just switch it around a bit. Even, go, maybe, even if you have to, play Scott Barrett as, as a Lucy. Right? You're trying to find your feet, so you've got to experiment. Go balls to the wall. That's kind of the takeaway that I have for, for the All Blacks team. I am on the fence with, uh, I'm on the side with, um, it's not all doom and gloom, but I need, uh, I would want them, if I was an All Blacks fan, to just try and experiment a bit more, right? Not even experiment, just try some new things, right? Um, they have to go out and absolutely smash the Wallabies um, in the next two games. Like, you can't go and lose the bladders low or even make a tight game. The, the Wallabies are there for the taking at the moment. They are really, really struggling. And I've been backing the Wallabies for, for a long time, a very long time, right? So um, just final thoughts, South Africa, All Blacks. All Blacks has to go out and, and, and beat the Wallabies by a big margin, but I don't think they should um, hang their heads. I, I think the, the All Blacks still put out performances to be proud of themselves. In both games, they had the opportunity to win the game. Um, obviously, the, the, the All Blacks that we know and the All Blacks of old, they would not let that game slip away, especially that first game. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, not a, it's not a sad day. It's not a sad day of affairs where it's like, oh, do we, have to, do we have to go out and sack Razor? No, it's not like that at all. For the Springboks, again, it's like that confidence building on it each and every week, even though we've got a ton of injuries. Um, this team, the, you just feel like the chemistry in this team is, is amazing at the moment, which is beautiful to see as a Springbok supporter. Uh, and we have to go against the Argentinians. I said we have to embrace being the favourites at some point. It looks like we are finally doing that. And we have to go out and, and put them to the sword. We have to say, listen, you think you have a chance, you don't have a chance. That is the expectation that I have for, for the Springboks going into the final two games. I know we're sending two different squads um, to Argentina and the team that's going to play here. I want to win both games and I want to win the one with our rotated squad by a mile as well. That, that is the expectation. We want to say we have all this depth in the world, all the quality in the world. Well, then let's go out and prove it, right? That is, let's play our future in, in that game against Argentina and, and, and give, show the world, listen, this is the depth, this is the quality that we have. Anyway, let's move on to, to the Wallabies and Argentina game, right? Because this was a shit show, to say the least. To say the least. I mean, I haven't seen a better Wallabies team in years 
than I saw in that first 30 minutes <laughs> against Argentina. And I'm on the same level as I, as I just said with, with All Blacks. I mean, like, it sounds so weird to say, even though they had a historic defeat, 94 points in a game. That is ridiculous for an international game. Um, 67 points against you. And how can I go out and say, I don't think it's all doom and gloom. I don't think we should be too harsh. They got utterly smashed, right? Let's not beat around the bush. They got bent over and piped. That is, it is an embarrassing defeat. But that first 30 minutes just showed you the class that they do have. Because it's not like Argentina was just this bad team, right? They, they woke up and they played some scintillating rugby and they smashed the Wallabies. But that first 30 minutes, they just showed you what this Wallabies attack can do. They're just so shaky on defense. Everyone except for Carlo Dizano. Angus Bell was brilliant. Carlo Dizano was brilliant. Ben Donaldson was brilliant. I mean... <laughs> How can you say those guys were brilliant and then you look at their scoreline? I just think you put more respect on Argentina for waking up and absolutely being ruthless and, and literally just, just taking every single point on offer. They were so clinical, literally every single time they touched the ball. Um, so that first 30 minutes, the Wallabies can take a lot of confidence going from that. I think they have to take that, look into that, see what we did right. And that is the game plan that they have to enforce against this, this, the All Blacks team when they take them on for the Bledisloe. I don't think they're going to win the Bledisloe by any means. Okay, I think the All Blacks probably thrash them once. Um, but that is, that is kind of the takeaway for, for the Wallabies. I have backed them. I don't, it is embarrassing, but it's, it's so weird to say. But I, as I said, it's, it's not all doom and gloom for them. Um, yeah, a lot of takeaways from, from that first 30 minutes, but I mean, forget about that, that second 40 as quickly as possible. They hardly even touched the ball. They just got smashed wherever they went. Um, for the Argentinians, I mean, what, what a rugby championship this is for them. Obviously, they, they lost the first game against the Wallabies, which was massive. I called the victory for the Wallabies. I said the Wallabies will win the second game as well. Um, but Argentina, to go and beat... Um, the All Blacks lose the first game against the Wallabies and then smash them in the next weekend, not only securing that they won't get the wooden spoon, which they used to, they actually have an opportunity to go ahead and win the rugby championship. If they can pull off the upset of all upsets and beat the Springboks twice, they could win the rugby championship. Imagine that, where everyone probably called them to get the wooden spoon, including myself, um, and they go ahead and win the rugby championship. That is crazy. Even if they just win one, I think they, they secure that second spot, which is massive for them, right? That is absolutely massive as, as, an, Argentinian, as an Argentinian fan, especially building from how the youngsters did in, in, the, in the Rugby World Cup. I think they placed fifth. Um, so what a team this is. And, and the only thing that they need to do is get consistency, right? Because played against France, got beat by France, and then they smashed France in the second game. Plays against uh, the All Blacks, beats them, but then loses by a country mile. Then loses against the Wallabies, bounces back with a massive victory. It's just like they need to build some consistency, right? That, that is the, the main part that it comes down to um, with these Argentinian boys. But I think there's, there's so many takeaways um, with them. Lucio Sinti had an absolutely outstanding game. Uh, who, was, who was the 10 uh, that played? I think it was his debut game or one of his first games. He just ran the show. Absolutely brilliant. That nine Betrano, brilliant. Um, obviously, usually when we talk about um, Argentina, it's, it's usually we talk about Kremer, Pablo Matera, or Juan Martin Gonzalez, but there were so many standout players for them. They were just so clinical and so, so good. It's going to be a feisty affair going up against South Africa because probably they would say, okay, the, the most likely team that we are to beat is going to be the Wallabies, but they, it's, it's not a massive upset if Argentina be, beat South Africa because they have done it a couple of times. It's not a new thing for them. So I'm really excited to see it. Am I nervous? I don't necessarily know, but they will be ready. They will be ready, and that's going to be a very, very exciting contest. Um, I, I'm trying to keep this video, well, I'm saying short and sweet. It's currently pushing towards 15 minutes. Um, but yeah, that is just the takeaways. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please do remember to like and subscribe. Let me know what are your takeaways for um, this weekend from literally all the teams. If you have a controversial opinion, say it. If you don't agree with me, say it. Um, by the way, also going back to the Springboks game, Jaden Hendricks, sir, the two boys that I criticized both had outstanding performances. Well done to them. Well done.
Anyway, see you next time. Bye. Wait, wait.